Head over to MiniatureMarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices and you can sign up for product alerts. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. For the last 10 years, I've been making videos about board games, but now I'm gonna be taking this show on the road with this off-grid worthy van. It was a shell of a van, but converted by Papago Vans in Phoenix, and this will allow me to live for weeks, even months on the road, doing game videos, going to game conventions, going to game areas, going to publishers headquarters, going to game cafes, and going to thematic, interesting nature spots to do game reviews in them. Now let's go inside and take a tour, but let's first show you a before and after montage. Now let's show you all about the van, starting from the front and working our way to the back. The driver and passenger seats both swivel to create an additional sitting area. And there's a lagoon mount table that mounts right on the seat. And these tables are amazing because they swivel, they turn, they're very flexible, they're great in small spaces. And so I could use this for a place to eat or most likely I'm going to be using this to a space to work and edit videos and do things like that. And sometimes I might want to sit on the driver's side because that one goes to about 45 degrees as well, even with enough room next to that countertop. And that sitting area actually has a great view of outside of the side door when you're looking out into nature. Now there is a three cubic foot fridge and it holds more than you think. Normally you're going to be shopping a little bit more often than at home, but it holds quite a bit, almost up to about a week of groceries if you're cooking and saving the leftovers and eating those as well. Now it does have a small freezer. It's good for mostly, you know, ice cubes and small things like that. We've added some small parts of functional decor like a fruit hammock and a vase with some artificial flowers that we hold down to the table with sticky tape so it doesn't move while we're driving. We found this nice linen fabric at Joann's and thanks to Anna for sewing these up for us. We put up a magnetic spice kit so you can put and label all your spices and it magnets to the bottom of the cupboards and so far they're pretty strong you can pull them down put them back up and they don't fall while you're driving we put these wooden pegs by the door so we can hold things like dog leashes and flashlights and umbrellas and hats and things that you'll need right outside the door also added some shelving and some greenery to make it a little bit more homey and they don't even move while we're driving we also added some plant hangers that we're using double-sided sticky tape to hold onto the wall and it just gives it a more homey feel with the greenery. And we cut up a hello goodbye mat. We screwed the first one up. We had to get a second one to make it fit. So it says hello as you're going in and goodbye as you're coming out. The countertop is butcher block and there's a two burner induction stove there to cook on. Plus there's some extra counter space that doubles as a cutting board when you take that out from the sink. There's also a purifying water system so you can get good drinking water and it's run by different filters and ultraviolet light. We decided to go with a mirror hexagon tile backsplash because we wanted to make the van feel bigger with the mirror effect, but also using it as a mirror when you're brushing your teeth, putting in your contacts and such right at the kitchen. There's a lot of storage in the van and the cupboards have this nice rattan wicker look. I think Papago did a great job putting on there, but it holds more than you'd think. Lots of our pots and pans and cups and all sorts of different things in the kitchen. 
There's also an extra shelf we had put in above the cab that's not there by default. This holds the curtain rod, but also holds all sorts of things like camping chairs and sunshades and things like that. Now, one of the biggest design challenges here is we wanted a shower indoor, but we didn't want to take up any space when you're not using it. So they came up with a great idea of this hidden indoor shower. So how does this all work? In the floor is a drain that goes to the gray water tank and you simply open this up. Then there's a foldable and storable basin that will go in that drain. And once that's installed, which takes just a second, it looks like this. Then there's a shower curtain that hangs from these hooks perfectly and it's tight enough that you don't lose any water outside. And the kitchen faucet screws off and you just screw on the shower head. And that shower head has its own hook as well and the weight keeps it where it needs to be. So here's how it looks from the inside when it's all set up and running. And when it's not running, we have the runner rug there. You couldn't even tell you had a shower that could go there. And that basin folds up nice and neat and right behind the sink. Now in the main sitting area, there are five different 20 by 20 boxes that are used for storage. So the one close to the door is for outdoor things and dog such things like food. Others, we have some of the bigger kitchen appliances that we use to cook, but there's also a locking mechanism to help keep our valuables locked up in the other storage unit. Now in that back sitting area is another lagoon table, which again, swivels and turns and makes it real comfortable for whatever seating position you're in. Now that table is 20 by 30, which is about one inch shorter than the Ticket to Ride board, but it sits on there just fine. And one of those storage boxes is the Thetford Porta Potty. Now it holds four gallons in the freshwater upper part of the tank, but it separates out when it's full at the bottom, which holds the waste. And you just carry this to a toilet and dump it in or a dumping station if you want to, but it's really easy. It doesn't smell or anything like that. And it's just, it's pretty easy. And you don't need to have this big, large black water tank in these smaller vans. Now when setting up the toilet, you just throw in one of these little toss-ins and it makes everything liquid. It doesn't matter whether it's waste or toilet paper or anything. So everything that comes out of there is just liquid that's scented. And it even has an electric flusher, which helps put the water in the basin. And then you just simply pull it to flush it. Now I did get this little privacy tent for if we need to go, we don't want someone else in the van. You can just go outside, set this thing up, it can go in there. And that big tent actually fits in this little thing, goes right behind the driver's seat. And the toilet just goes right back where it belongs and there's Velcro straps to keep it from moving while driving. Another design challenge was in addition to having the whole dog space underneath the fixed frame bed, we wanted a second bed for another couple or person. And so the back area folds down. That lagoon mount comes off and comes down. And there's another one that will come down next to it. And then it just gets made into a bed. And this is about the size of a full size bed. So one person easily or two if they want to get comfy together. And that extra board is stored just on top of the water tank with a Velcro strap. Lots of attention to detail here. Now you may have noticed in the outside shots, these flare outs, these bump outs. Now why are these here? Well, this allows you to put a queen size bed sideways. So it takes up the least amount of space in the van, but also still be able to stretch out completely from head to toe. I'm average height 5'9", and I'm not even close to hitting the walls when I'm sleeping. Now this area also doubles as the theater so I can hang this little projector screen and watch, you know, football games or shameless plugs, watching your own YouTube channel. And it's up high enough that your feet actually slide underneath it. Now that 40 inch screen hangs on these little hooks that I put in, in the ceiling, but it's also meant to sit on a tabletop. So if you want to sit outside and watch it, when the weather's nice on a table, you can do that as well. And when putting it away, it doesn't take up much space because it's thin. And so it fits right in the compartment above the cab. Now we have a couple of outlets right near the bed and the outlets have the USB, the main ones and USB-C as well. So it's easy to be charging your phones by the bed. We found these magnetic curtain rods, which hold the back curtains well, and it gives it a little bit more of a homey feel. Now for the huge dog area in the garage, they installed a 12 volt fan to keep the airflow going for the dogs and the beds. We found this fabric at Joann's and thanks to Anna again for sewing these. We found a queen size four inch memory foam mattress that we cut up into these two custom beds. Now I'm an avid biker. I bike almost every day and I knew I was getting this van. So I looked into this and got a Brompton bike, two of them actually. These fold, They've, they make folding bikes since 1976 and they are leading the industry in how well these are engineered, but how small they feel fit. And sure enough, I'm able to fit both of the bikes inside the back of the van and just slide the bed over and the dogs will have just about the same amount of space. So let's talk a little bit about the utility of the van. 
it has a 30 gallon fresh water tank and as you can see it filling now and the cool thing about this is it fills with just a normal hose right on the side and there's a 23 gallon gray water tank which is all your soapy water and things like that and it only hooks up to a regular hose so you don't need one of those big giant dump hoses and there is a four gallon water heater and this heats all the water for the front and the back and it's long enough to take two showers with it being heated up and it takes only about 10 minutes to heat now that hot water heater also heats the shower off the back which is in this nice compact compartment and this is great for a lot of reasons washing off the dogs washing off the bikes but also when it's nice out taking a shower now we use these magnetic hooks to keep the shower curtain on the back in case you're not completely alone. And there's even a spot on the door to hold the shower head. And usually we have the curtain shut as well. Now there is a max air fan and these things are amazing because you can use them by pushing the buttons or they have a remote control that tells you the temperature. You can set them to auto. These fans are super powerful. If you vent another window, it creates a wind tunnel in the van, cooling it down really well. But I live in Arizona and it's really hot here in the summertime, so we opted to get an AC unit. Full AC, it really helps in the summertime, especially when we want to leave the dogs for hours as we go out and explore. But in the wintertime, there's also a heater. This thing's amazing. It runs off of the diesel fuel in the van, so you don't have to have any propane in the van. And the heater itself is just housed inside underneath the passenger seat. Now there's three ways to power the van. One is with a normal 120 plug, so you don't need that huge 30 or 50 amp, although I've still never had to plug in yet. The second is a DC to DC charger. There's a 60 amp one here, and it charges as the car drives. It charges really fast. And lastly, it charges with solar. There are four 100 watt solar panels here, so a total of 400 watts. And again, living in Arizona, the sun here is strong. So even when you're just sitting there, you're gaining energy back. And if you're driving and in the sun, you're getting a lot of energy going from place to place. That's the reason why I've never had to even plug in yet using this on multiple trips. Now in the back, there's the control panel where all the fuses are and some extra fuses, and they're all well labeled in case anything were to go wrong. Now you can monitor your power using Bluetooth on an app, but there's also a monitor, which is great because it tells you not only your power, but how much time to full or empty, whether you're gaining or losing power. So I hope you enjoyed this van tour. Uh, if you are not a subscriber and you wanna see these adventures, go ahead and subscribe below. Uh, also, I've already launched a sort of my first travel vlog. It was right before I got the van testing all the equipment where I went to Napa Valley and such. If you want, you can check that out up there. Uh, and I look forward to going on these adventures with you and matching life, travel vlogs, and gaming together. This has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers and growing relationships through board games by helping you on the next one you'll love. Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table to a high quality gaming solution, they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with their amazing thematic premium stitch edge mats from noted board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and really cool accessories, it's a complete system that upgrades every game you play. Go to GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below to late pledge for their latest Game Topper 3.5 Kickstarter campaign.